please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back to Omegon 2. Today we're going to be looking at some videos taken from TikTok as always. It is quite the cesspool. I would say it's quite clean by comparison to that of Twitter, but then TikTok does like to rock up and go, ah, but we can be even bigger dickheads on this platform and less people will notice because even if we have a larger follow account here than we do on Twitter, we're still literal nobodies. Much like with Twitter though, much like with YouTube, if you put out an opinion that can be considered controversial, it will be noticed and it will then be shared to Twitter, which will drive up a little bit of engagement on your TikTok page, but you will then go defensive because that's often how it goes. So set in one's ways, they are incapable of accepting criticism or learning from the criticism. Or, because it's TikTok, you can swerve completely, because you think once you've deleted it from your page, the internet suddenly forgets your stupidity. Like the first person we're going to look at a video from, who believes that a white person providing a compliment at work is equal to that of a microaggression, which can in turn be offensive. Let, let's go through that first, shall we? On today's episode of Is It A Microaggression or Is A White Lady Just Being Nice? A co-worker says to me, you're running this meeting very well. Mind you, the person who was supposed to run the meeting didn't come, so it could have just been a nice compliment. Well, in the context of you not being the person that was meant to run the meeting in the first place, they may well have been saying that to encourage you, to uplift you. Perhaps they know you may not have any experience of running these kind of meetings in the past, or did not know that you may have had experience of doing that in the past. Do you understand how context is vitally important, right? The user who we're looking at at the moment is called Frankie Eccentric, or Frankie Centric with two C's at the start. If you ignore the fact of the obvious spelling error, yes, that's a thing. They make a lot of TikTok content on their page as an abolitionist, a DC organizer, and an educator. Their form of education centers around black Americans. What it means to be proud of your identity, and how to work together to uplift each other because, and I'll quote them, there can be no revolution without the hood. What do y'all think? Okay, three things. Impact, intent, precision. Would she have felt compelled to say the same thing to a straight white male? So, what I've gotten from very short clips of your content is an obvious remark that needs to be made. You are baiting for views. This would go so far as to explain why you have over 100,000 followers on your TikTok, but average viewership of a much lesser kind. Which can also, if you want to be pedantic, be attributed to the fact that to be successful on TikTok, you need to be less one-dimensional and more proactive. But you are limited by your one-dimensional play with the kind of message you can espouse before people get tired of it. A less is more approach is sometimes required to sustained growth. Of course, if you have the chance to promote alternative platforms and use that to spread your message, you have a greater chance of succeeding. Having 100,000 followers on TikTok is not like on YouTube where you get an award for it. At best, you get monetized over there and you earn sod all. A bit like YouTube, really. We don't know because we can't guess her intent. Did I feel offended? No, I didn't, but that doesn't mean other people wouldn't be. It doesn't matter how other people regard it. What matters is the interaction was between you and her. Therefore, all other opinions and perspectives are irrelevant in the setting and context of that meeting. So why does it matter what anyone else thinks, really? But do tell us which you think it is, whether it is a microaggression or not. So I think it's both. And that's why it's important to be explicit with your language. Okay, well allow me to be explicit with my language. You provide a very short video talking about microaggressions and use some anecdotal evidence where you then take the middle of the road of it being both a microaggression and not a microaggression, depending on the context, but the context is quite clear, showing that you are solely race baiting and baiting for additional clicks, which got you a bit of attention on Twitter through libs of TikTok, which didn't actually yield much in the way of additional interaction on your page because this video is nowhere to be seen. Yes, I scrolled through quite a bit of your content. Nontent would be more accurate had that not been co-opted by the likes of Amberlynn Reed to try and see if I could find this video to find out if you had gotten any additional interest in your content or the one video because Lord Diminishing Returns fully comes into effect and no one gives a damn about the message you espouse. But based on the microaggression 
accusation. No, it bloody well wasn't, and microaggressions still don't mean they're wrong. It just means you're being super sensitive and have a very long word to, well, state super sensitive without saying you're super sensitive. To the next person, another entitled moron thinking that because of their sex and their race, they should receive monetary compensation for it. I believe that every black woman on this planet should be entitled to financial compensation just for existence on this earth in this society. How about no, you entitled brat? Go get a job, build your own life and your own future in a society that treats you a lot better than your ancestors were treated. In a society that treats a lot of people vastly better than their ancestors. How about instead of the cliche TikTok user espousing their entitled little messages from their bedroom, you go out there and make a name for yourself instead of clout chasing on TikTok thinking it'll accomplish anything. It's not even a hot take, by the way. This is a regurgitated reparations argument, rinsed and repeated with a younger generation believing they should just be given it. And though I could go down my laundry list of reasons and likely convince you to and show you why I believe that, I'm not going to. You'll understand when you do. Toodles! This video is 14 seconds long. On TikTok, you could have uploaded minutes worth of content going through individual reasons as to why you believe what you believe. But go figure another woke moron telling us they won't because, well, you need to realize it for yourself. I'm not here to help you understand why I believe this. I'm just going to assert it as the arbiter of truth and you need to catch up with me because I'm ahead of my time. A trailblazer in the field of bullshittery. While saying this, I came to a realization. Firstly, you've conflated all people of one race and one sex instead of it just being you. And I can now answer why you want to be paid for to exist solely because you exist. Because you're a loser. That's why. A feckless loser who accomplishes nothing on TikTok, which is basically everyone on TikTok. On to video number three. Video number three is another interesting hot take. It's a bit longer at least. This might be a controversial take. It was so controversial, everyone, that you turned the comments off. Although that could be because, unlike a lot of your previous content, this one got traction with libs of TikTok and got 136.9 thousand views at time of recording and you haven't uploaded in three days as a consequence, whereas before you've been uploading on a more regular basis. But I'm seeing a lot of queer white people posting shit like, like posting themselves being really happy and doing some random shit and being like, yeah, our joy is resistance. And like, in my opinion, white people's joy is not resistance. You and I might have a very different perspective when it comes to the concept of happiness joy and resisting whatever it is you stand up for what you oppose if you cannot find happiness in anything that you do you are only ever going to spend your entire life miserable if you believe that the happiness of queer white people causes some kind of negativity because you're not experiencing it as well even though you're so black pilled and jaded it's impossible to chances are you are making oppression where oppression does not need to exist. You are after all a community, but you now have sought to tear that into racial elements to shame others to get in line with you because you being queer and you being a minority racially as well as sexually means that you are more oppressed. Oppression Olympics, for fuck's sake, we're still doing this. Like queer or not, your joy is not resistance. Matter of fact, your joy is what got us here in the first place. See what I mean about the whole black pilled and jaded thing? Your happiness got us into this mess in the first place. What mess would that be? I only ask because you're very open about not being American. You do multiple videos in essentially Portuguese, but Brazil being the country I believe you claim to be from. I don't care where you're from really. You do a lot of content about free Palestine, but you do a lot more content replying to comments and talking about being they, he, about also other gender and sexuality based societal problems. But in none of your content do you talk a solution. I had this yesterday on my main channel where I spoke about the pointlessness of protesting at art museums, how it accomplishes very little. The same can be said for those that think themselves some kind of activist on social media when they use TikTok to accomplish it. 
At that point, you were about as much a social media influencer if you are from TikTok as somebody with two followers on Instagram. You accomplish the same and equally nothing. Like your joy is why we're having to resist. And like y'all putting yourselves and finding yourselves and like your own joy in front of everybody else is what got us here. Additional point that needs to be raised. Not everyone is part of a hive mind. Some people find their happiness and they are content with that. Not everyone is an activist. Not everyone wants to be an activist or an advocate. Some just want to fight for certain things, very particular and specific things, when they have accomplished it, or they have fought enough and feel it is now no longer their responsibility, they move on and do their own thing. You are trying to guilt everyone into a constant state of what can be considered warfare. A rather embarrassing warfare where everyone does Naruto runs to charge into battle while screaming their fabled war cry because they've got sod all else and they all have the fighting skill of a toddler's little finger. Like literally I'm seeing so many white people right now going on like organizer retreats and posting about their joy and how awesome it was. Honestly, I wanna see more of y'all like sitting your ass at home and giving your money to black and brown people so they can do that shit. Let me guess, you watched that Law & Order episode where the white woman wouldn't prosecute the black man because she had white woman privilege and you've realized, actually, this is right. So to any white person going to these retreats and feeling invigorated, recharged to get back into the fray, how dare you? Now give the money to me I've got to buy some Nashies, Tendies, Chick-fil-A if we're not still boycotting that. Perhaps send the money to Palestine. Yes, we've got so many options available to us. Maybe buy Joe Biden some Viagra. We could do that as well, you know, because we're good activists. If to you wonderful people it wasn't immediately obvious that I really was rolling my eyes while recording all of this, I was staring at my cerebrum the entire time. These cliché activists are all the same to me. Constantly crapping on anyone based on an arbitrary factor using anecdotal evidence to back it. They've seen it somewhere so they'll assert it in a video. It is beyond parody and cringe, yet this is the crap many of us have to see and put up with on a near daily basis. It's why the videos often find their way here to a Megon too. Because you idiots don't stop. You sit in your car, you sit in your bedroom, you sit in your lounge, you espouse your bollocks and you go back to doing nothing for the rest of your day while claiming you're oppressed, while claiming you're marginalised and using no proof to back it. You're embarrassing. 